Hi, thanks for viewing me. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Today I'm going to talk about how to build self-worth. Now, first thing I want to do is a little exercise and I hope you do this exercise with me. Okay, the first thing I want you to all to do is to grab a piece of paper and a pen and write down an amount of how much you think you're worth. Please pause here and come back because that amount is going to be a big thing at the end of this video. That's the first exercise that I want us to do today. Write down an amount or picture it in your head right now. How much do you think you're worth? You there yet? Please pause if you're not so you can come back and watch this, okay? So, the second thing that I'd like us to do today is a little exercise. Imagine me, I'm Linda, I'm walking into a shop and today I want to buy me, Linda. So I walk into the shop and the first thing when we walk into a shop is we have to decide how much to pay, which is worth, how much am I going to pay for me today in that shop. So I walk into the shop. The first thing is I see Linda, she's sitting up there on the shelf. <laughs> Come on, it's going to be a good exercise this one, okay? So we walk into the shop and there's you sitting up on the shelf. How much are you going to pay for you today? Write that figure down. Put a phys physical figure in your head. I'm willing today to buy Linda or yourself, make it about you, not me. But I'm using me as an example. How much am I going to buy Linda for today? Right now. So you write that figure down as well. Now when you walk into that shop and you see yourself up onto, on the shelf, we've got a couple of options. First option is you walk up there and you say, hmm, I don't know how much Linda's worth. I'm going to look for a price tag. So we scrounge around and we find the price tag. That's actually wrong. What? It is, it's wrong. Because the only person who knows your self-worth is you. So you would already know how much you're going to pay for yourself today, right? The second thing is, when we go into that shop and we can't find that price tag. So you ask the guy who works there, or the girl who works there. And you say, hey, there's, a, there's Linda up on the shelf. How much am I going? How much is she worth today? That's also wrong because we never ever allow someone else to put a value on who we are. Getting it yet? Because that's a big one right there with self worth. Never allow somebody else to tell you how much you're worth. Because you already know it. So the first thing I want to do today, we're going to get back to this amount, okay, at the end. There's five ways through um, psychology, because hello, I've studied psychology for a few years. There's five ways in psychology that we put a value or a worth on who we are in society. And I'm going to tell you something straight up. All five of these are wrong. They're wrong. Okay, so let's go through this. This is societal worth. Okay, the first one is our appearance. How many people will spend two hours doing their hair, another two hours doing makeup, ironing their clothes so they're pristine and beautiful before they even leave the house? How many people run to the gym every week? to work out so they physically look better than what they are. Or they run to the beach and they'll sit there for hours trying to get a suntan to make their skin look better than what they are. That's wrong. Because we should never appease to another person. The only person who is important to us is me. Huh. 
People have said to me over the years, Linda, why don't you go and get your tooth fixed? Because I lost a tooth a few years ago. And I say to them, I don't need anyone else's opinion on who I am. If I am happy with the way I look, that is all that matters to me. Okay? The next thing is net worth. So this is number two on the list. Net worth. How much do we appreciate, value or um, respect somebody who's richer than the next person? So our net worth, is that a true reflection of who we are as a human spiritual person? Absolutely not. So it doesn't matter if you've only got a dollar in the bank or if you've got a million dollars in the bank or a trillion dollars in the bank. The person who has that money comes down to who they are as a person, not how much net worth they have in the bank. Okay. The third one is social standing. Oh, look at me. I'm associated to this person. Oh, I know that person. I'm an influencer and I get all these followers on net, um, on YouTube, BitChute, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Look at all my TikTok videos. So social standing, people put that onus of worth on how many people watch them. Okay? Or know them. That's also not right. The next one is our career or our title. How many people you meet in the street and you say, oh, what do you do? And they say, oh, I'm a police officer. Or I'm a dentist. I'm a car mechanic. Or I'm a janitor. How much worth do we put on that janitor compared to a judge, a politician? Or a prime minister. See what I mean? So our career, at the end of the day, does not matter. You leave your job after 30 years, you're lucky these days if you get a pen. They don't care who you are, as long as you do your job and you get paid for it. They don't care when you leave, because they'll advertise your position and have somebody else there the following day. So we put too much emphasis on our worth of the position or the title of what we are and not who we are. And the last one is our achievements. Oh, when I was 18, I got this award. When I was 22, I won this trophy. When I went to university, I got this degree. I've got this achievement in my life. Oh, I went off and I got married and had 13 children. Those achievements make us feel valuable in society. And it's not right. At the end of the day, they could be the worst abuser on the planet. It doesn't matter what achievements, career, social standing net worth or appearance you have because the only thing that matters is what is inside or our energy of what we do to ourselves first and others so there are four ways of building up self-worth one is our abilities you look at yourself and you say, what am I good at? What am I bad at? Don't go your job. Don't go by how many videos you put on YouTube. Don't go, go, don't go about your achievements. Oh, I won the semi-finals last year. I'm going to be better next year. Better next year? Really? Really? Because now you're competing against somebody else who doesn't give a heck about you anyway. Because the only person who cares about you is you. Okay? So this is where we start to empower ourselves. And we look at ourselves and you say, right, the only person who's important to me is me. Once I appreciate myself, once I start to love everything about myself, I then am going to send this out as a ripple effect to everybody else on the planet. And then they will identify that it's only emitted from me is what they're attracted to. 
So it's our abilities. If I'm good at gardening, if I am good at fixing my car, if I am good at knitting, crocheting or any other crafts, if I have this natural ability where I can paint or write poetry or care for your neighbours and friends, huh, that's a good ability, isn't it? So write all that stuff down. Natural things that you can do well. Don't concentrate on the bad things that we all do. I am hopeless at fixing my car. I am hopeless with technical things. So I don't concentrate on those. I concentrate on the things that I do get value from. I get value from ringing my friends and saying, you know what, I care about you so much I want to ring and make sure you're okay today. I get value from walking across the road and feeding the goose that lives across the street from me because his dad works all day so someone I go over there and make him feel all right the goose running around the front yard that's how I get my self-worth so the next one is effort so number two one was ability number two is effort if you're writing these down what effort do I put in to those abilities that I naturally have so you may have written down that you're a compassionate person. So what effort are you doing to prove, number one, what effort do I put in to look after the welfare of an animal across the street? How often do I actually walk across and just say, hey, has it got water because it's getting hot? How much effort do I put in to talking to my friends and letting them know I care about them? How much effort do I put in to the other abilities that I do? So that's something that you can ask yourself. The next one is performance. Am I good at walking across the street and feeding the goose? Now that's an easy one. Performance. Okay, so I put on my shoes so it makes me walk better when I walk across the street and I make sure that I go over there with some bread and some water and a bucket. So you look at the performance that you put in to doing that effort if you're an artist how much performance do you put into it all that behind the scenes work that goes into the effort so instead of just sitting down and painting a picture do you put in that performance where you actually figure out what you want to draw do you figure out what colors you want to use do you work out all that behind the scenes things oh I think I might put a tree in this picture today all that before you do the effort to do your ability and that's how we build number four which is self-worth okay I'm going to tell you a little side story here before I go into some more exercises I used to work with an 80 year old volunteer 80 year old the first day I met this man he walked up to me and he said what are you doing here today you worthless piece of shit what I said to him, excuse me, don't call me that. And he said, well, I don't need you here. You can go home. So the next day I came to work and he said it the same thing. What are you doing here today, you worthless piece of ink? I said, excuse me? How dare you tell me that? And he said, well, your job's not even worthy. You know, you know you, why don't you just go shopping for the day like the last girl who used to work here? Now, I worked with that man for three years. Every day, he'd call me a worthless piece of ick, probably up to a hundred times while he was there. So over those three-year period, I turned from thinking that I was this strong, independent woman who knew her self-worth, I started to believe what he was saying about me because I was hearing it repetitively over and over and over again. So I didn't realise it because I never had the conscious thought, oh, Linda, maybe you are that worthless piece of... But after that three years, I actually was in that pit of feeling I had no self-worth because I put so much onus on what he thought about me. So how do we build self-worth? First thing, do not ever listen to other people. Now... In today's society of 2020s, look how much on the media 
They're telling us how much we're worth. Stay in isolation. Wear your thing on your face. Don't go to work. Stay at home. So they're controlling us. Because when we are being controlled by others, which could be our neighbours, co-workers, family, friends, other people, even animals can control us. Yeah, hello, I've got a cat. She controls me every day. So when we get starting to get controlled by others, we feel less than that other person or thing. We feel our self-value going boop, 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 and down to zero. Our self-worth just simply disappears because we, we feel that we're not good enough. We feel that we don't deserve anything in our lives. We start getting depressed. We start getting sad, stressed. How am I going to pay my bills next week when I, I'm about to lose my job because I won't do what my boss says, if you follow what I'm saying? Because that's happening to a lot of people right now, right? I Look how many nurses are about to lose their job, paramedics, doctors, for other people in health police officers, paramedics, um, any job where they're telling us now this is a condition of your employment but it's not in your but it's not in your employment contract. But you've got to have this thing now. So people are there like, oh, I've worked here for 12 years, I'm valuable. And now you're telling me my software's down the drain and I'm going to be unemployed because I have a decision, because I'm standing up for my rights. So guys, never, ever, ever allow somebody else to tell you what to do if you believe something about yourself especially ourself because at the end of the day no one else can tell our self what to do stand in your ground and you say you know what I've got these abilities I've got this effort that I put into my abilities I do the performance to make my abilities work and therefore I am worthy to be who I am and no one else is ever going to tell me I'm worthy, less worthy than who I believe. So, self-worth. Sit there. Write down all the things that you love about yourself. Things that you've done over the years. Not so much achievements, career goals, net worth, etc. And your appearance. Write down all the good things that you've ever done for anybody else. I've got a good story. Let me just wipe my eyes. Excuse me. I had to go into the city and catch a train into the city to see a doctor. I came back out at peak hour and it was Central Station in the middle of the CBD. So there was thousands of people at the station. I was standing at the exact right time at the exact right location where the doors opened in front of me and this old homeless man got off and he fell over. Everybody else started laughing. They were laughing at him. Ha, 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 look at that old useless, worthless old man. So I ran over to him and I said, are you all right? And he said, oh, yes, I am, but I've broken my trolley. He had a little trolley with him on wheels. Got stuck between the train and the platform. So I gave that man $20. Didn't even hesitate. So I got on that train. Everyone was looking at me like, what were they thinking? Because I, I don't know what they were thinking. Because none of them helped him. And they weren't showing compassion. They weren't showing care. They weren't being non-judgmental. They were judging him. They were accusing him by laughing. They were showing how negative they were. So write down things that you've done in your life. Whether it's play with a dog. Giving water to the animal across the road when it's a hot day. Write down all those beautiful things that you personally have done. And you sit there and you think, wow, I've done some really good things in my life. I am worthy to keep doing that. And if you haven't got many things on your list, write down things that you can do in your future to make that list. Make it like a goal or a plan or an ambition and say right today I'm going to make the effort I'm going to go to the shop and I'm going to smile at some random stranger look them straight in the eyes and smile at them 
See how easy this is to gain self-worth. Because self-worth at the end of the day, darling, it doesn't come down to what society says about us. It's about who we are on the inside because it ripples out of us and then other people feel it, they attach to it and they start acting the same. So if you're proud, because this is self-pride, if you are walking around, I feel so good within myself because I have all these abilities that only I can do. So look, I just showed you one of my abilities. I talk with my hands. See this? I'm proud of the fact that I talk with my hands because I'm the only one who does it. Seven billion people on the planet and here's Linda. She's the only one who does all these crazy weird things with her fingers when she talks. I'm like a puppet. And I don't care what other people think. Because it, if it doesn't, if it makes it matter to me, I don't care if it matters to anybody else. Because I'm standing in my own self-worth. Okay? Saw this lady one day. I had to drive past, past a bus stop. All these people standing there in black, so they're all corporate going into the city. They're all sitting there on their phones. And as I looked down this queue of people, there was a seat under the shelter and there's this girl standing on the seat in her black suit. She had the phone in her hand with her headsets in and guess what she was doing? She was doing this. She did not care what any of those other people thought of her for a start because they didn't matter to her. She didn't care that she was about to go to work because she was already doing what she loved. Isn't that a big doozy one? So out of all those people standing there at the bus stop that day, who's going to have a good day at work? The people just sitting there, oh, God, another day at work. I'll just sit here on my phone waiting for the bus, wasting all this time and effort. Do nothing until I get on the bus and then I'll do it some more waiting another hour to get into the city to do my drum little job. Or who's going to have the good day? The girl sitting there, yeah, I'm having a great day. I'm dancing and rocking it out to my favourite song on my, whatever it was on her phone, Spotify or whatever. But she was in the right headspace because she didn't care what other people think of her. She didn't care what her co-workers thought of her if they drove past and saw her sitting there. She didn't care. Because it didn't matter to her what other people think. Okay? Be yourself. And shine being yourself. Be who you truly are. I actually call myself a 1980s rocker chick. You know, I love my 80s and 70s music. T-Rex, The Doors, Rolling Stones, Kiss, Bon Jovi. Aerosmith, I love all that. So when I put that music on, I'm, ah! And I sit there with my air guitar and I'm rocking out to the drums and I'm doing the keyboards. I don't care if other people see that because I'm being true to myself, which builds my own self-worth. So let's go back to it, guys. How much did you write on your piece of paper at the beginning when you looked at yourself standing on the shelf? Because I'll tell you, guys, Add some zeros because here's my amount and I think I've got to put another piece of paper on there with more zeros. That's how much I'm worth to me and nobody else matters. So please guys stop putting so much onus on how good you look, what's your net worth, what's your social standing with your friends. Don't worry about your career or your title or your any achievements that you've got. Think about how much you do from here. How much love do you show to others? Because ultimately, when we die and go to heaven, because I've been there, remember, this is all that matters. It's all that matters. It's how good we are to ourself first and then to others. So I hope you like this one, guys. Have a good day and I'll talk to you all again soon.
Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.